how much it costs to buy a home in Jamaica. A question about Jamaica real estate prices and just in general about property is one of the most common I get not only from those who wish to relocate to Jamaica but also from tourists. And guess what? I couldn't find such video on YouTube. There are plenty of videos talking about some specific houses for sale, but not the one that would show the whole picture and explain what kind of real estate is available, cost of home in Jamaica, and what it depends on. So, this episode, your full guide to Jamaica real estate for free. Before we begin, I'm not a realtor, I'm a journalist, and my job is to make videos, not to sell homes. So please don't contact me about buying real estate in Jamaica. Instead, check the description of the video where you're gonna find all information with the websites and contact numbers for realtors in Jamaica. And now to the video, and we shall begin with the stereotypes about Jamaican property, because nobody ever talks about that part. So please bear with me, as you will see, it is is actually quite important. When I first relocated to Jamaica in 2014, one of the culture shocks I had was the types of homes in Jamaica. You see, because of the way Jamaica is portrayed in the media, someone who has never travelled around the island might get the impression that there are resorts where tourists stay and there are homes where locals live, which look something like this or this. If you are a Jamaican, you might not even realize that, but this is the image provided by films, documentaries, news reports, YouTube vloggers, and Jamaican music videos. Just type in Google how Jamaicans live, and these are the images that come up. Obviously, these areas do exist, and they're called ghetto areas, and about 50,000 people live in these areas across the island, which is under 2% of Jamaican population. Another 3% of Jamaicans live in homes in rural areas that look like this. When I came to Jamaica, none of this surprised me, namely because that was exactly what I expected to see because of the media. Now, what did surprise me was to see homes of the rest of Jamaican population, which, let me remind you, the remaining 95% and which do not receive coverage in foreign media. So imagine my thoughts when I was looking for a place to rent in Montego Bay and the realtor took me to this area right here. This community is called Ryan Park and when I saw it for the first time, I thought that was the community for rich people, obviously. But no, the realtor told me these are starter homes built by the government. A two-bedroom house with a backyard is a starter home in Jamaica, just in case you don't get it. A starter home in Ukraine, where I'm from, is a studio where a family of four lives in one room in this human nest-like building thing here. Okay, you might say Ukraine is a poor country, I suppose, whatever, but I also lived in England. And when I moved from Bournemouth to London, my first studio there was so small that every night I would open the oven to stick my feet in there because otherwise I couldn't fit in when I lay down. And yes, the kitchen was inside that studio. But look at the bright side. I could actually reach out to the sink next to my bed to get some water without getting up. How convenient. Anyway, I'm sure British people know what I'm talking about, but for everyone else, budget accommodation in England often has an issue with space, unlike properties in the US, Canada or Jamaica. The reason I'm telling you all this is to address the stereotype that exists among some Jamaicans themselves, because when people spend most of their life within one community, they assume that all Jamaicans live like that, which is simply not the case. But the stereotypes among the foreigners are even worse. When I created a video about real estate in Jamaica for Russian speakers on YouTube, some people didn't believe me. They said I was lying and they know how most Jamaicans live because they watch Russ Kitchen. The fact is, not many people live in Jamaica like Russ Mocha does. And that's exactly what makes Russ Kitchen channel so unusual, interesting and engaging. 
But let me invite you for a drive to look at all types of real estate that you can find in Jamaica. video I decided to find a realtor who could be my co-host and that ladies and gentlemen was easier said than done but I didn't just want any realtor I wanted a good one and I knew quite a few but the problem they either couldn't find time or couldn't find properties to be filmed or didn't want to be on camera finally I was lucky to get in touch with a great realtor who replied right away was able to organize properties to be filmed and contributed her time to writing the answers to my questions so please welcome the co-host for this video Nicole white okay so hi my name is Nicole it's Nicole white I'm a licensed realtor in Jamaica originally I came from the UK after spending my childhood and my early part of my career living in England my father is Jamaican and I decided three years ago that I would relocate here I've always worked in property in one way or another um, with the local authority I've worked for housing associations, I'm a private landlord and I had my own real estate agency in the UK for the last five years prior to coming to Jamaica. We're going to start with a typical Jamaican family home. They're usually large detached houses, typically from three to seven bedrooms, often have a quite large private garden and a classical Jamaican design that has been influenced by Jamaican Georgian architecture and various traditional Caribbean styles. Here we have a five bedroom house four bedrooms upstairs and one bedroom downstairs. Um, it has two living areas, also one downstairs, one upstairs. It's a bit cooler up here because you have the veranda with the breeze, the sea breeze blowing straight on into the room, so it's lovely. This house is in Caribbean Park. Um, it's you know quite large lots with similar size houses. Um, it's approximately 10 minute drive from Ocho Rios, so it's quite central. So this is one, two, then a bathroom three and then the master bedroom. Now this room has been designed with the owner in mind, spacious, airy and light. Going into the ensuite bathroom, a nice massive bathroom with a shower cubicle, jacuzzi bath and extensive wardrobes. So here we have the dining area, big enough for a family of six to sit down and eat and coming through into a nice home style kitchen. Again, big enough for several people to be working in here at one time if you wanted to. As some of you may know, there are some large properties in Jamaica. And the reason for that is there was a phenomenon of the Windrush generation who migrated to England in the 50s and 60s. That first generation worked hard accumulating and saving and often sending money back with a strong desire to return to the rock. Most did not want to return to the same house or area they came from. They wanted properties that were, you know, would accommodate the whole family. So they were thinking of children and grandchildren. Even more immigration waves took place during the civil rights era in 1960s with more Jamaicans relocating to Canada and the United States. Currently over 1 million people of Jamaican origin live in the US, around 800,000 Britons have Jamaican ancestors and about 300,000 Jamaicans are in Canada. Jamaican diaspora is over 2 million people, which is almost like the population of Jamaicans living in Jamaica itself. That is why it should not come as a surprise to see a lot of these large homes all across the island, and quite often they are built by the representatives of Jamaican diaspora. Another common type of real estate you will find in Jamaica is called a townhouse. A townhouse in Jamaica is normally um, like a two up, two down. So it would always be on two floors. You'd have the main living area downstairs, kitchen, um, living room, and the bedrooms upstairs. Sometimes a townhouse complex in Jamaica would feature just a row of attached or semi-detached homes. 
or it can be a very large property that looks like a palace and you might get the impression that all of this belongs to one really rich person but no this is a townhouse it can have like five separate units maybe even ten in some cases that are shared between several families this type of property is quite affordable for people with middle income like the professional skilled workers in Jamaica then we have apartment complexes, from studios to three-bedroom apartments. They often have a much more modern design in comparison to other properties in Jamaica. Are apartment complexes getting more or less popular now? And why? Yeah, apartment complexes are getting very popular, particularly in Kingston. Um, like very many cities, you know, they're running out of space. Um, this is a way that they can fit more people into a smaller space. Um, they had to change the building regulations in Kingston because it had always been pretty much one, two levels before, particularly for residential properties. So they are becoming very popular in Kingston. One of the reasons for this popularity is that people find them as good investment for short-term rentals and also because they are more affordable than a large house in the same area, yet still have all the convenience of being close to a city centre. These apartments are sometimes bought by people from overseas, including Jamaican diaspora. But more than anything, these apartments are mostly popular with local Jamaicans like medical workers, bank employees, accountants, other professionals, and people who run small businesses. Apartment complexes tend to be gated and have a guard on site. But please don't confuse them with gated communities that we're going to discuss soon. But now let's look at small detached houses. These would usually be found in the so-called housing schemes, like Ryan Park I mentioned earlier. Housing schemes in Jamaica are typically large planned areas. They are normally built on similar sized lots with similar styled housing, not gated and normally have government involvement. NHT stands for National Housing Trust. It was set up in 1976 to increase the amount of available housing stock in Jamaica, as well as providing the financial assistance to those who wish to build, buy or repair their own homes. You know, there is a housing scheme and there is an NHT housing scheme. There is a difference between them though. There's not really a difference between NHT and a housing scheme. NHT is a funder, because what they're doing now, they're teaming up with developers and, um, and they're building schemes, but a non-NHT person could purchase on that scheme. I will explain how NHT works in a separate video, but here I just want to mention that these housing schemes have been mushrooming all over Jamaica, especially in the last 30 years. You see, these two-bedroom detached houses are mostly aimed at lower income to middle income families. As a result, the standard of living of an average Jamaican has increased because of the access to these affordable homes. But again, please don't confuse a housing scheme with a gated community. In Jamaica, we have a number of gated communities. A typical gated community is a community of which is usually guarded with a security point and or automatic gates. Properties may look the same, though there are gated communities with individual builds or a mix of properties, for example, houses and apartment blocks. Gated communities usually have a homeowners association who manage the communal areas, maintenance and general upkeep. Richmond Estate is an example of one of those gated communities. There are annual general meetings which agree the rules and the fees payable. Homes at gated communities are usually aimed at individuals with middle income, upper middle income and some are for high income families. You will see local professionals and people running small and medium sized businesses investing into these homes. But I also notice that gated communities are exceptionally popular with Jamaican diaspora and foreigners who have friends in Jamaica. They like to invest into these homes to either retire in Jamaica or just to have a vacation home where they can come to spend winters in the Caribbean. Let's have a look at pros and cons of living in a gated community versus non-gated community. The pros of living in a gated community will be that it's would feel more secure, there'll be a point of security. Communal areas are maintained, so there are usually shared facilities like a pool, a clubhouse, an entertainment area. There are also some cons, and those could be getting the general consensus for the management of the communal areas. Maintenance fees also tend to be quite high. Some of the communities can be very large, 
as it takes quite a while to get around. I know that some people would say that I don't want to come to Jamaica and be inside that gated community. It's kind of feeling like being locked in. Mm-hmm. Do you have that attitude as well from people who don't want to buy a house in a gated community? Like it's one of the cons. So, OK, taking Richmond as an example, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's gated. You'll have the patrol cars going around and there's cameras <laughs> on the exterior. So it could feel, you know, quite intimidating to some people and, and not that freedom that you come to Jamaica for. But at the same time, there are a lot of people who feel more happier in that environment and feel more secure. So some of the pros living in an ungated community are that you'll have the freedom to extend your property, you'll be able to use the property for you know, short-term rentals, you will be able to have the freedom to you know, paint, build and develop your property how it suits you as an individual. Some of the cons living in a non-gated community could be it may feel less secure, you don't have that point of security to go to. As there are no general regulations for the area, it, they, there are pockets where it could feel and be unkept. There may be a lack of facilities, um, unless you have your own pool, there won't be no you know, shared facilities. And you will also be solely responsible for the cost of maintenance for your property in any area around it. I don't live in a gated community and I wouldn't want to live in one because it doesn't offer anything of value to me in Jamaica, but it gives a headache with regulations. But that's because I live in Jamaica full time. Maybe if I lived in a different country and wanted a vacation home in Jamaica, then yeah, a gated community might have been a very good option for me. And the only reason is, of course, there would be someone to look after my home while I'm away. However, I also know that there are people who want to invest into a house in a large gated community in order to rent it out on Airbnb. And this can be a problem because some of these gated communities might have rules and restrictions when it comes to short-term rentals. So if Airbnb is your goal, make sure to check that information before you invest in your money. Now, in general, what do you think? If you were to choose where to live in Jamaica, would you go to a a gated community or a large family home or get a home at housing scheme or prefer an apartment and why? Share in the comments below so we can discuss. The other thing that needs to be mentioned here is that these gated community schemes like Richmond Estate are certainly not luxury properties that rich and wealthy Jamaicans would choose. Some people might think that the family home that we've just, you know, checked with Nicole is a luxury accommodation too, but no. Would you consider like this house and anything like this as a luxury accommodation? Because people have this, you know, yeah. assumption that if there is a pool or if there is a garden, it's like luxury, rich people. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you consider this as a luxury accommodation? For Jamaica, I wouldn't consider this as a luxury accommodation. A luxury property in Jamaica is, is more likely to be either, um, you know, by the sea, a seafront property, Um, As as big as some of these five and six bedroom houses are, they'll tend to be much larger. They'll tend to have um, staff quarters. Well, luxury real estate in Jamaica is at a completely different level. Some of these villas is where rich Jamaican business people live. If I look at Montego Bay, it would be the community of Spring Farm in the hills or the lagoons where you'll find really wealthy Jamaicans. In this video, I'm not going to give you any details on this. I just wanted to present a few examples to give an idea. But in reality, however, a lot of luxury real estate in Jamaica is not where people live. Instead, it is mostly used as commercial property to rent out to visitors who are ready to pay for quality and service these places provide. The other big questions you might have now are how to buy a house in Jamaica. Is the real estate market goes up or down? What about land? How to get mortgage and loan and things? The videos with answers to these questions are coming out a little later. So before we continue, if you're interested in this topic, don't forget to check your bell notification to make sure it's on so you won't miss them. In the meantime, there is a list of websites in the description of the video to give you an idea of what's actually available on the market, so check it out. And, what's even more important, give a like to this video, because you're enjoying it, hopefully. And now to prices. 
So some of the factors that would influence the price would be um, obviously the location. Beachfront property would attract a much higher price. Kingston in general tends to carry um, a higher price tag for your family accommodation and the apartment complexes. Price range will also depend on the size of the property, the size of the lot. If a property has a river passing through it, that could also increase the price of a property. Imagine this is your house. Let's see how the price changes as we move this very same house to different places around Jamaica. The first location factor to consider is whether the house is by the coastline or inland. If we put it by the coastline in Montego Bay, let's say its price tag is 1 million US dollars for the house and the landlord. If we now take this very same house with the same land and move it into the hills above Montego Bay, 30 minutes drive from the sea, it would be around 300,000 US dollars. The second location factor is the influence of tourism. We have three main cities in Jamaica where most tourists go when they travel. They are Montego Bay, Ocho Rios and Negril. There are two more towns that can be viewed as the centers for all of the beaten path tourism and these are Treasure Beach and Port Antonio. Let's have a look how the price for our house would change if we move it from sitting at the coastline in Montego Bay to say coastline in Ocho Rios or Treasure Beach. Or let's move it to a place where hardly any tourists go. Let's say St. Catherine. In all of these cases, the same house still by the sea, but tourism is what makes the difference in price. Why? Well, because the demand to live in these areas to work in tourism industry because of potential to use it for short-term rentals for tourists and so on. And the last crucial factor is urban versus rural. Note, it's not the same as coastline versus hills because we do have urban areas in the hills like Mandeville where real estate prices can be higher than for those homes located in rural communities by the coastline. The price for this house in Mandeville would be around 400,000 because it's a town, but the same house in rural community by the coastline in the middle of nowhere would be around 150,000. But if we move it to a distant rural community in Blue Mountains in St. Thomas, it would be like 100,000. And now let's take this home and move it to the center of urban life, like the capital Kingston, especially the part that is known as New Kingston or Uptown Kingston. The price tag will shoot through the roof and would be like one and a half million US dollars for a house like that. And there we have it, from 100,000 to 1.5 million. This is obviously approximate, but this is just to illustrate how real estate price can change in Jamaica just because of location. this question so many times people would write on Instagram like how much it costs to buy a home in Jamaica probably assuming that the answer is like one bedroom is this two bedroom is that etc but nobody would come up with an idea to ask an American how much it costs to buy a home in the US obviously prices in LA California would be completely different from prices in I don't know garden city in Kansas yet when it comes to Jamaica people just assume it's a small island I guess but it's not. In fact, it's very complicated in Jamaica because of such huge differences in the terrain. The bottom line, if you want to pay less for your home in Jamaica, choose rural communities in the hills away from touristy areas. Well, bye everybody. Thank you for watching. And if you need my details, please see in the description below. I'd like to thank Nicole for helping out with this very first episode in the series of videos about Jamaica real estate. Please don't forget to contact her if you need further help. It's not an advert. I never charge people to be featured in my videos. Instead, I go for their talent, knowledge and skills. But I can only do that because I get help from you, the audience. So thanks to everyone for watching and of course, 
huge thanks to all the patrons, especially these two patrons who are our official sponsors. If you also wish to join our project and become a part of it and help us push more quality content about Jamaica, you can do so from only five US dollars per month. And you will find the link to our Patreon account in the description below. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.